Presidency, it's not good enough. Uh, calling the uh, Honourable Peter Dunn. Chairman, Abraham Lincoln once said of a colleague that their competence was restricted to causing crises where previously none existed. Uh, having heard the debate this morning, I think we're creating controversy where none actually exists. Mr Chairman, let me just reiterate the points that I made in response to the Honourable Ruth Dyson. When the bill was introduced, it related specifically to the conservation estate. Uh, during the debate at the Select Committee, the funding mechanism that is proposed in the bill is a, trophy, is a levy on trophies realised from all forms of hunting. In other words, all geographies. Following the report back of the bill, a number of those groups that represent private landowners, and I include federated farmers as, as one example, came to the government and said, because trophies taken on our land are going to be subject to the levy, we think we ought to be included under the Game Animal Council rubric. It is as simple as that. This is not about diminishing the role of recreational hunters. Far from it. In fact, it is including all hunting groups for the first time at the same table. And if the members who are concerned look at the provisions relating to the membership of the Council, they will see that it is, they are broad and will enable all interests to be represented. I just make this point as I conclude, sir. I've listened to this debate, which has been a useful one, but one of the themes that has come through repeatedly has been the risk of the Game Animal Council being at odds with other groups in the sector. The very best way to ensure that that is the case is to limit the scope of its application. And the amendments that are contained in the Minister's SOP, uh, far from doing that, actually bring people together for the first time. And Mr Speaker, I cannot for the life of me see what the concern is about. I suspect it's an element of political point scoring, which is fair enough in this place. But frankly, when you have the Chair of the Establishment Committee say that there's not a problem with it, when you have the major groups who will be required to be part of the the, the payment process saying they want to be included under the scope of legislation. It's the first time I can recall groups actually saying they want to be included in legislation. Most times groups want to be excluded, left to do their own thing. You actually have the basis of a consensus moving forward. And I think that the debate in the House frankly diminishes the significance of that and puts at risk all of the good work, and I freely acknowledge this, that members opposite were part of in the Select Committee in taking this concept and turning it into a proposition that is now workable and is on the point of being established. Mr Speaker, there is no hidden conspiracy here. There is no hidden plan. It's a simple fact of responding to needs that have been expressed and ensuring that we get the best possible outcome in the interests of all hunting groups across this country. Mr Chair. I call Brendan Horan. Chair. Uh, sir, I'd like to take a, a brief call, but in response to uh, the Honourable Peter Dunn, I would say that the only